Hi, in this lecture, you will learn how to use for update class of cursors. You know from the SQL lessons that when you update a row, it's automatically locked to any change to the other users. That means no one can touch to the row that you updated until you commit or roll back it. But sometimes we may need to lock a group of rows for some time and prevent any change until I do my job. Let's say you are calculating the salaries of the employees and the salaries are calculated based on the work days. So I need to calculate the day offs of the employees. So I don't want any change on any row of the table that has the day offs. Or I don't want the commission percentages to be changed by someone else until I finished my job. To do that, normally we need to update a column of all the rows with the same values for once so that no one else can touch these rows until I commit or roll back. But this is not so efficient because you did maybe thousands of updates unnecessarily and these chains are inserted into the log files. So your managers may ask you, what did you do with these columns? Besides, the update is a costly operation, so you will use database resources unnecessarily. To sum up, this is not the correct way. Instead of that, cursors have something very efficient. It is for update class. For update class locks all the rows of the select query in one step and they will be locked as soon as you open the cursor. They will be unlocked when you commit or roll back. With this way, you lock all the rows without doing any DML operations. So it is much better. For update class is written as the last statement of our select statements. We will see that. So what if some of the rows that you want to lock are already locked by another session, means another user? Normally, the cursor waits these rows to be unlocked indefinitely. This is not so good all the times because you may wait for hours or days. This will not be good because your session will wait along this time and will not be able to do any more changes. Either you need to kill the session or wait for hours. But there is an option to handle that in for update clause. It is no wait option. With selecting no wait option, if any row of the selected result set is locked by another session, the program will not wait, stop running, and return an error. So you can try to run that later. This is not a perfect solution, but better than killing your session. But know that if someone has locked a row, we cannot take that lock out. Because if we unlock that row, all the changes of the other user will be gone. So this is not a good thing in a real job too. Because of that, we can either wait for all the rows to be unlocked or select no wait option to stop executing and try again later. By the way, by default, this option is selected as wait. Means you can write wait if you wish or keep it void. Will be all the same. But with wait option, we can specify a specific number of seconds to wait. This can be helpful. You can say that wait for 30 seconds. If the rows are still locked, stop waiting. So it will return an error after 30 seconds. Actually, it must return an error. Otherwise, you will not be able to understand that you couldn't do your job. So that you will be able to run the code again. One more thing. If you join multiple tables in your cursor and use the for update clause, you will lock all the selected rows of all tables. But most of the times, there is no need to lock all of the tables. I just want to lock one or two of them. Can we do something like that? Yes. We can use for update of class and the column names to do that. We simply write for update of and the column names separating them by a comma sign. So only the tables that has these columns will be locked. Pretty useful. This is how we use the for update class. We write our cursor just like we know. Then after the select statement, we write our for update class. If we have a join operation and lock specific tables rows, we will specify the rows with off keyword and then the column names separating them with comma signs. Then if you don't want the program to wait for the locks, we specify no wait option. Or if you want to wait for a specific time, we write wait and then the number of seconds that we want our program to wait for the locks. Great. 
Now let's make some examples and see all these on them. Now we need to create another user first because we will test the logs of different users. To do that, let's connect with the system user because HR user does not have create user privilege. So we will do that with the system user. System and the name is system and the password is 123 as we remember. TNS and ORCL and test. Let's save the password and save the connection and connect. Now let's create a user named my user, for example. We may use this user later in this course. Create user, my user, identified by one, two, three again. Great. Now we need to grant some privileges to connect and do some changes on the tables. Grant create session to my user. And let me copy this, select any table to my user. Perfect. Now let's grant update privilege on the employees copy and departments table. Grant update on hr.employees copy to my user. And let's copy that and paste and change the table name with the departments. Great. Now let's create a connection for the my user. My user and the username is my user and the password is 123 and connection type TNS ORCL test save password save the connection and connect. Perfect. Now let's close the system worksheet and open up a new connection with HR side by my user. One with the HR user and one with the my user. Now let's right click on my user and new document type group. Great. Now let's make an update with the HR user. Update employees copy set phone number is equal to let's say one and our work loss employee ID is equal to let's say 100. Now let's try to update the same column with the my user. Let me copy that and paste in here and write hr. Dot. Since employees copy has not any synonym, we need to write its schema first. So I write hr. Dot. Great. Now let's run it. As we can see, our update waits. Waits until the hr user makes any commit or rollback. So let's roll back and see what happens. Perfect. As soon as we roll back, my user could do its update. We know these from our SQL lessons. Now let's roll it back and see how we use the for update class. Let's clear up the HR worksheet and start coding. Declare cursor C underscore amps is select employee ID, first name, last name, department name from employees copy join departments using department ID column and our work class employee ID in let's say 100 101 and 102 I use the join with two tables to be able to see for update class better. But there can be one table in our cursor too, no problem. So let's write our begin keyword. Now I will use a simple for in loop. It's my favorite and I use that most of the times. For 
r underscore amps in c underscore amps loop. Now I will update all the selected columns. Update employees copy set phone number is equal to three where clause employee ID is equal to r underscore amps dot employee ID our end loop and our end keyword perfect now let's make our update and see if we could update oops we have a typo table or view does not exist it's employees copy so let's clear up and run our code again great now let's select and see if we could do that select all the columns from employees copy let's clear up and run the single code As we can see, we could update our rows. Now, let's roll it back and query again. Great, our phone numbers are still the same. Now, it's time to use the for update clause. We know that for update is written as the last statement. So, let's type it. I simply write for and update keywords. Great. When we use that keyword, as soon as we open our cursor, no one will be able to update or delete the rows that selected from two tables. I mean, the rows that has these employees in employees table and the rows that has the match department IDs in departments table. In here it is department ID 90 because these employees work in department ID 90 and departments table joined with employees only with the department ID 90. Besides, we know that our cursor is open automatically with the for in clause. So these rows will be locked until we do any commit. Let's test it. Now let's run our block. As we can see, successfully completed. Now let's query again. As we can see, we could update. Now here is the thing. Let's run the update code in my user and see what happens. As we can see, it is in lock. But this does not show that our cursor locked it because we did an update in it. So let's roll back, comment the update and try to do the same thing. Now I'm going to open my cursor. Now let's run it. Great. Now let's try to run the update command with the my user again. As we can see, the row is locked. As soon as we open the cursor, the rows are locked. Now let's stop our update in my user and try to update the departments table with the department ID 90. Let me copy that and paste in here and departments and department name is equal to let's say X and the department ID is 90. Now let's run it. As we can see, our connection is closed. To handle that, we need to disconnect and connect with my user again. Now let's clear our script output and run the update command.
As we can see, this row is locked. Let's kill our session again and try to update the Department 9200. I simply disconnect and connect again and select my user in here and script output in 200. Let's run it. As we can see, only the joined rows are affected, not all of them. But we can handle that with the four update of class. Let's roll back both operations first. Now let's add our off class. For update of employees copy dot phone number. Now let's run it. Now let's run the update command with the department ID 90 again. As we can see, we could update this tag. Perfect. Now let's roll it back and add location ID column into our for update class. We know that it is in departments table. departments dot location id let's run it now let's try to update the department id 90 again with the my user as we can see even if we specify the different column in that table we could not update the department name column any column name of the related table will be enough to lock the row because Oracle makes row level lock. It does not lock a column, locks all the row. Perfect. Now let's roll back both and then I will show you something more. Let's connect and connect with my user again. Let's select it and clear the outputs. Up to now, I showed you that if we use the for update clause, it locks the related tables. We know that. But what if the selected tables are already locked? Let's see that. Let's run the update statement in our my user session first. I think we could not roll back the HR user, so I'm coming and roll backing it and roll back in this again. Now let's run our update again. And let's run our cursor block. As we can see, it waits because we locked the related row in the employees table. We have two more options for that. The first one is specifying a specific time to wait. Now let's specify five seconds then. Let's roll back the operations first. Let's be sure. Location ID and wait for five seconds. Now let's run the update command first. And now let's run the cursor block and wait. As we can see, it waited for 5 seconds and then exited with an error. Resource Busy acquired with wait timeout expired. You can specify any second in here. Great, the last thing. If I don't want to wait for the locked rows, I will write no wait instead of wait. Let's do it then. Now let's run it, because our row is still locked by my user. As we can see, it directly exited with an error since the related row is locked by another session. Now let's roll back the update and run the cursor block again.
as we can see, it could open the cursor since there is no row locked in the selected result set. Great, we saw all the uses of for update class. Now you know all the details of this subject. So this is the end of this lesson. See you in the next lectures.